2021 was full of bangers and 2022 looks to be no different. Let's jump in with the 20 biggest games coming in 2022. The long-awaited sequel to Guerrilla's hit game Horizon Zero Dawn was planned to release in 2021 but is now arriving early 2022. Given the high bar set by its predecessor, that might be for the best. Horizon Forbidden West, as the name suggests, sees Aloy venturing into the western United States as she continues her journey of survival and discovery in a post-apocalyptic world overrun by dinosaur-like robots. Stealth, acrobatic traversal and bow combat are at the heart of the franchise and all look to be making their return in full force for the sequel. We'll also likely get some more answers regarding some of the game's more intriguing sci-fi questions. Five years is a long time to wait. Bethesda Game Studios' first new IP in 25 years is coming in November 2022 and we are very, very excited about it. After making a name for itself with fantasy games, Bethesda is turning its attention to the sci-fi genre with Starfield, an RPG about the appeal of exploring the great unknown. Art director Matt Carafano said recently, it's got a more realistic, science-based backing to it. Whereas Skyrim is sort of an epic fantasy, this is a more grounded game and a grounded setting about exploration. So I think that gives us a different take on how we make everything. After enjoying great ongoing success with Rainbow Six Siege, Ubisoft is returning to the Tom Clancy series with a new game, Rainbow Six Extraction. Due for release in January, the game includes a number of features and elements from Siege. However, Ubisoft maintains that Siege and Extraction are different enough to appeal to different audiences. In Extraction, players team up to fight against alien enemies, for example. Extraction is a budget-priced game coming in at $40 and includes buddy pass tokens that you can give to friends that allow them to play as much as they want at no cost for two weeks. Rocksteady, the UK studio that made the Batman Arkham games, is returning with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. It's the studio's first new game since 2015's Arkham Knight and 2016's Arkham Knight VR, so we're excited to finally play a new game from them. The game features members of the Suicide Squad you may remember from the films and comics, including Harley Quinn, Deadshot, Boomerang, and King Shark. A 1-4 to four player co-op game, Kill the Justice League puts players on a mission to… kill the Justice League. Intriguingly, Rocksteady's Sefton Hill has said some of the narrative threads from the Arkham trilogy will carry forward to the new game, but the specifics are unclear. Borderlands developer Gearbox is making a spin-off of sorts called Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. The game features the voices of very funny people like Andy Samberg, Wanda Sykes, Will Arnett, and Ashley Birch returns to voice Tiny Tina herself. The game is described as an epic high fantasy take on the looter-shooter genre that Gearbox itself pioneered with Borderlands. Players will shoot, slash, and cast magical spells to try and take down the evil Dragon Lord. The game also supports co-op for up to four players and end-game content that is replayable. The Witch is back. Bayonetta 3 seems to have been in development forever, but in 2021, we finally got a look at some gameplay. Bayonetta's known for some of the most deliriously camp action shooter gameplay out there, and the eponymous character is as charming as she is deadly, defeating hordes of angels and demons with flowing locks of hair that would make Rapunzel jealous. We can't wait to play the third installment in this series. Square Enix is making a Final Fantasy prequel game called Stranger of Paradise – Final Fantasy Origin, and it's one of our most anticipated upcoming games. Developed by Team Ninja, Stranger of Paradise appears to adopt more of a Neo-like gameplay formula into the Final Fantasy dynamic. According to Square Enix, Stranger of Paradise will feel different from previous Final Fantasy games, but still has, quote, the blood of Final Fantasy running through its veins. The game features real-time combat and players can take on a variety of jobs as they use magic and physical attacks. Team Ninja has a style and reputation of its own from the Ninja Gaiden series, and we're excited to see how those skills and sensibilities are applied to Final Fantasy. Redfall, the next game from Arcane Studios, creators of the Dishonored series and Deathloop, looks to be quite a big departure. The cooperative first-person shooter, which is coming in summer 2022, tasks you and your friends to destroy the vampire plague that has overrun the titular town. 
It allows for single-player gameplay as well, and Arkane promises that it retains the studio's signature level design to help it stand out from other cooperative shooters, with character customization and special abilities. Alongside vampires, human enemies dedicated to worshipping them will also stand in your way, and hopefully, your bullet's way. The original Dying Light from Techland was a spectacular blend of parkour-based traversal and hack-and-slash gameplay wrapped up within the drama of the zombie apocalypse. It was essentially a more realised version of the developer's previous efforts with Dead Island, and it succeeded with showcasing an ambitious sense of scope and brutality while barreling through the ruined streets of Haran. Dying Light 2 continues with many of the original's key strengths, from freeform traversal, melee combat, and overwhelming encounters with the undead. While the sequel aims to go bigger, featuring a map that greatly dwarfs the originals, the most significant change is its approach to narrative. In Dying Light 2, your actions can irreparably alter the course of the larger story and even change the layout of the world itself. By bringing together the freeform traversal and combat with an RPG-style narrative, Dying Light 2 is already shaping up to be a massive step up from the original that will ensure your actions leave a significant impression on the world. Since the release of Demon Souls way back in 2009, developer From Software has significantly redefined itself, moving away from niche status to a real AAA force within the games industry. Their signature high-risk, high-reward gameplay has seen many imitators over the years. Debuting at E3 2019, the cryptic trailer for Elden Ring showed off a world in conflict. While not unfamiliar to the visuals and plot of the Dark Souls trilogy, the scale of Elden Ring is significantly larger and moves more towards the iconography of Norse mythology. Elden Ring brings in many of the familiar elements of a Souls game, but with an increased focus on world building. As it turns out, a Song of Ice and Fire creator George R. R. Martin, which became the HBO series Game of Thrones, you might have heard of it, has collaborated with From Software on the overarching narrative of the game. With an open world setting realized by Martin's writing, designed around From Software's gameplay, Elden Ring could be yet another big step forward for the developer, and potentially for the infamous subgenre as well. How do you follow up one of the greatest games of all time? Of course, make a direct sequel, which we don't know the official title of just yet, has us all clamoring for details, with recent trailer footage offering a tantalizing glimpse into the setting we'll be exploring, hopefully, in the near future. We've all been speculating as to what the next Hyrule adventure will entail, with folks even going over the symbolism used in an effort to decipher what the Zelda team has in store. Combine this with the potential narrative implications of the recent spin-off Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, there are any number of scenarios that could play out. Breath of the Wild was so brilliant in part because of its wondrous sense of discovery and exploration. Its sequel will take to the skies in an exciting attempt to reach the same dizzying heights, hopefully in 2022 on Nintendo Switch. A brand new action-adventure game from Square Enix, Forspoken sees protagonist Frey Holland transported from our world into a fantasy realm called Athia, where she's given the power to soar through the air and cast magical spells. It looks like a cross between the movement in a game like Marvel's Spider-Man with a much more magical moveset, and given the fidelity of the trailers and the high-speed action we've seen thus far, it makes sense that the game will only be available on PS5 and PC. But Square Enix is certainly hoping for the game to be more than a tech demo for the system, as is the new internal studio, Luminous Productions. Ghostwire Tokyo is one of the most exciting upcoming games for PS5 as it's a completely new experience for studio Tango Gameworks. The company is now owned by Microsoft but honoring an earlier timed exclusivity agreement. Ghostwire is not a survival horror game, instead it's a paranormal action-adventure with spooky elements that's played from a first-person perspective, with a combat flow that resembles something like Dishonored? It remains to be seen if that combat can mesh with investigating supernatural occurrences, but Tango Gameworks has a knack for world-building and has already shown great improvement since the original Evil Within. The 2018 soft reboot for God of War, which continued the story but radically overhauled the gameplay, was one of the best PS4 games. Sony's Santa Monica Studio is certainly looking to match that quality with God of War Ragnarok, a game that will wrap up the Norse storyline. We've only seen a glimpse of gameplay thus far, and Kratos' son Atreus will play a major role once again. Will Kratos be able to defeat Thor, the God of Thunder, or will the once disgraced demigod finally be destroyed? Well, probably not, but we won't know for sure until the game releases, which will hopefully be in 2022. 
The Advance Wars series brought some of the best tactical gameplay of the Game Boy Advance and Nintendo DS era. Now we get to revisit it with a fresh new look in the form of Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp, a Nintendo Switch remake of the first two games. Featuring turn-based gameplay on a grid, the Advance Wars games see you assume the role of one of the various commanding officers directing troops to victory, with each military group capable of using game-changing special abilities such as unit repairs or power boosts. Who's going to protect Gotham City without Batman around? Batgirl, Nightwing, Red Hood and Robin, of course, and in an open-world action RPG called Gotham Knights, no less. The game can be played solo or in two-player co-op with what's said to be a seamless drop-in and out system. The story will be separate from the existing Batman Arkham series, though. Gotham Knights' main story will be about the rise of the Bat family following Batman's apparent death and their conflict with the Gotham City Rogues Gallery, which includes the infamous Court of Owls. After remaining dormant since LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens in 2016, TT Games is coming back to the franchise that started its wildly successful kid-friendly series with a soft reboot. LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga will encompass all nine numbered Star Wars films, making for the first time the games have explored the most recent two, The Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. But these are more than remasters. Instead, TT Games is starting fresh by rethinking the entire mechanical foundation of LEGO Star Wars and making new cutscenes to modernize the long-standing action platformer. The release date has slipped a few times, and it's currently due in early 2022. After making a name for itself with the XCOM series, developer Firaxis Games is making a Marvel game next with Midnight Suns. The tactical turn-based game features famous Marvel characters like Iron Man, Captain America, Doctor Strange, Captain Marvel, and Wolverine. It appears Midnight Suns borrows from the Fire Emblem series, with players able to build relationships as they take on the role of a new Marvel hero named The Hunter. Players use ability cards on each turn and work together with teammates to take down enemies. Pokemon Legends Arceus is shaping up to be one of the most exciting new additions to the series in years. Where Pokemon Sword and Shield took small steps into open world exploration with the wild area, Pokemon Legends Arceus looks to be going all in. Set in the distant past, you play as an adventurer tasked with creating the Sinnoh region's first Pokedex. In a significant change to the series, Arceus appears to take place in real time, with catching Pokemon requiring you to aim and throw Pokeballs while they roam openly in the wild. Its lush, nature-filled, open-world setting has drawn comparisons to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, a game that certainly makes for good inspiration. The focus on the eponymous Pokémon promises plenty of interesting narrative implications as Arceus is considered a deity-like figure that created the Sinnoh region. We'll find out more when Arceus hits Nintendo Switch in January. Splatoon, the family-friendly ink shooter, is a big seller for Nintendo, so the announcement of Splatoon 3 was a welcome inevitability. The Splatoon series has captured imaginations worldwide with its bright and fast-paced gameplay, fresh music, and the hotly contested Splatfests. Splatoon 3's setting, as shown in the reveal trailer, is a Mad Max-style desert wasteland which looks moody as hell and looks like a fascinating location for waging turf wars. One of the new weapons revealed is a bow capable of shooting ink arrows to take out opposition, inklings, and claim territory for your team. Both Splatoon games released so far have been brilliant fun for all ages, which is exactly what we're expecting when Splatoon 3 splashes onto Switch sometime in 2022. So there you have it, our most anticipated games of 2022. We'll always have all the latest, so make sure you like this video and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, have a good one.